All right, chat GPT memory is out and there's some things that you need to know. Uh, will this help you get way better and more personalized results out of chat GPT? Or is this maybe just going to get in your way and bug you? Well, we're going to talk about it real quick right now. All right. Thanks for tuning in. This is our AI in five. So if you don't know, my name is Jordan Wilson. I'm the host of Everyday AI. We're a daily live stream podcast, free daily newsletter, helping everyday people like you and me learn and leverage Gen AI. So let's go and just look at the things that you need to know right now. Nine things to know about chat GPT memory explained. Well, even before we get to point number one, point number zero is not everyone has it right now. So this is only rolling out to a select few accounts. That's pretty normal for OpenAI when they release new features. Usually this kind of testing period will last anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks on average, but sometimes it's a month or more. So uh, I'm guessing this one will be probably a couple, couple of days to a week, especially when OpenAI is publicly um, you know, posting about this. So sometimes if they're not publicly posting about it, that trial uh, phase takes longer. When they are posting about it, I'm guessing it's probably going to be a couple of days to a week or so. Uh, so if you want to check if you have access, number one thing you need to know is go into your settings, look under personalization. So if you have personalization with a memory toggle, that means you are one of the few users that has it. So right now they are testing this with both free and paid users. When this rolls out, uh, OpenAI didn't really say if this is going to be available to free and paid users in the long run, but right now both uh, sets uh, do have access in the testing phase. All right, so that's number one. Number two, you can manage your memory. All right, so uh, at any time you can go in and click the manage button and you can add or like I'm saying here in number three, is you can um, you can delete. So there is the option right there in managing your memory to delete uh, everything. You can like, you know, hitting a hard reset on ChatGPT's memory. Or number four, you can delete individual memories. So uh, if ChatGPT is picking up on something, or if you add something in there uh, that you maybe don't want anymore, you can delete it. So if it's screwing up your output, uh, you can just delete them all individually. Or like I showed you previously, you can just uh, manage the whole thing and clear everything. Okay, so you can also chat with no memory. So uh, I'm going to show you uh, here in a second, but you can essentially tell ChatGPT to remember anything, or sometimes it picks up on it on its own. Y you know, there might be certain details you might not want. So if you're using ChatGPT as an example for both personal and work reasons, and maybe it picks up something in your personal life and you're using it for work reasons, you might not want there, uh, or you might not want that. So uh, once you do have access to this uh, to this feature. Um, when you hover over to select a mode, there should be a new mode called temporary chat. What we don't know right now is what mode uh, that chat actually is. Presumably, it's going to be the GPT-4 default mode. Uh, I don't know if, as an example, you can do a temporary chat in plugins mode. Um, I'm guessing maybe not, but we'll have to wait and see till when more people have it and we can do some testing. Number six thing to know, so a user uh, testing catalog, I uh, shared this on Twitter, uh, but uh, they were the only person that maybe had access to this or showed a screenshot anyways. But when you build your own GPT, uh, you should have the option to enable uh, or disable memory. So if you are building a lot of your own custom GPTs and you may want uh, when someone's using those custom GPTs to remember and to put kind of um, that uh, information into the chat GPT memory bank, uh, you can either enable it or disable it per each GPT that you built. Uh, all right, number seven, <clears throat> you can simply ask chat GPT to remember. So people are wondering like, oh, how does this work? Well, when you're talking um, and maybe something important, you type to chat GPT and you're like, oh man, I have to keep typing this over and over and over. Uh, so let me, it, you can just tell chat GPT, you can explicitly tell it to remember um, and tell it not to forget something. So you can just do that conversationally or in the settings. Uh, Another thing to keep in mind, number eight, sometimes ChatGPT will just start remembering things on its own, which I think is both good and bad. Personally, I don't like this piece, especially for, I'm a power user, right? Depending on the day, you know, I'm using ChatGPT anywhere from two to eight hours, right? It varies all the time. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of things that I maybe don't want ChatGPT to pick up, right? If I'm working on a variety of projects for a variety of different regions, both personally, professionally, creatively, I might not want ChatGPT to pick up all those things because uh, I think for power users who use ChatGPT a lot, it's actually going to require a lot of cleanup. You just might not want ChatGPT to remember certain things. Uh, so keep that in mind if you do have access. And then number nine, 
this doesn't replace custom instructions. Okay, so custom instructions is still a thing. So as an example, if you don't know what custom instructions is, that's it's kind of a version of memory, um, but you have to manually uh, enter it in and you can't um, independently toggle it on or off for new chats. It either needs to be on for all or off for all. So custom instructions is still there. It's still a thing, uh, but you can't, uh, with custom instructions, it's not going to auto update on its own. You have to manually put that in there. So if there's things that you would, in theory, want to add to memory, um, you can do that conversationally with GPT memory. You obviously can't do that with custom instructions. So they both work hand in hand, both have their pros and cons. Uh, am I going to use uh, chat GPT memory? Probably, I mean, I'll use it for testing, but I actually think there's a lot of downsides that people aren't thinking about specifically. Um, that ChatGPT just adds things on its own. For some people, if you are using ChatGPT for a very limited uh, number of, of ways that you're using it, maybe that's great. But if you use ChatGPT for a ton of things, you're probably going to be annoyed. I would, I would want or I would like to see ChatGPT to kind of find a middle ground. So if it's going to remember things, uh, I would like for there to be a kind of like a yes or no prompt. Like, oh, would you like to add this to memory, right? I think that would make it a lot easier. But otherwise, if you use ChatGPT a ton uh, with this kind of uh, auto-generate uh, piece of memory, I think it's going to actually require you to do a lot of cleanup and it's going to be affecting your output. So make sure if you do have memory, you should be checking it fairly often. I would say for every you know hour or so that you spend inside ChatGPT, you should probably go in your memory and make sure it doesn't need cleaned out. All right. I hope this is helpful. If so, go to youreverydayai.com, sign up for the free daily newsletter. Please also subscribe to this channel. That would be great. And, but also I tell people, our website is like a free generative AI university. Yes, those podcasts are just me, but we probably have at least 50 podcasts and live streams that you can watch and listen to. I talk with other experts from all over the country, how they're using chat GPT and they're using uh, generative AI to grow their company, grow their careers. So check that out on youreverydayai.com. Click those AI learning tracks and join us for another AI in five. Thanks y'all.